Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel on Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Hi, welcome to this edition of Able to Learn Air, um, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I've always been your host, Lauren Seiler. And on this, um, on this uh, television program today, we will, um, we will talk about uh, overdosing, sp uh, sports and steroids, and many other things in regards to that. And also today, uh, or this month, is Overdose Prevention Month, or Overdose Prevention Day. Uh, with me to discuss, with us to discuss this important topic is Ron Rondin of Ron Ron of Ron of Ron Rondin. Uh, it's, roll tripper. it's roll trip with Ron Rondin. Roll uh, with roll trip with roll. Ron Rondin from Brooklyn Free Speech TV and Free Speech One. Uh, welcome, Ron, um, to Able Dinner Now. Thank you very much. Good to see you once again. It's been like this is our annual year. It's just, you know, when you get a regular on the show, it's just be back. It's good yeah. to be back with it anyway. Okay. Um, so let's um, talk about the first thing we want to mention and talk about, you know, there's a lot of things around uh, uh, around overdosing and um um, steroids and that kind of thing, but most recent case with the uh, na the Women's National Basketball Association (WNBA) uh, is with Brittany Yvette Griner. Griner from uh, from the, one of the best women's basketball teams in the league. Uh, she um, she was caught in Russia. Uh, with um, hemp oil and marijuana uh, due to a medical uh, doctor's card. If you have a medical doctor's card, you should be able to carry. But, uh, um, but you know, she got, uh, she's dealing with that, and she's in prison at this point. Um, she's an American, according to uh, Wikipedia, she's an American professional basketball player with the Phoenix Mercury of the women's of the women's national basketball association, she's currently in prison in Russia, and she plays college basketball. <clears throat> she uh, she played college basketball for the Baylor Lady Bears in Waco, Texas. She's the only NBA uh, national NCAA uh, basketball player. <clears throat> 
to um, both score 2,000 points and block 500 shots. In 2012, the three-time All-American was named AP Player of the Year and the Most Outstanding Player of the final of the finals. Griner is one of 11 women to receive an Olympic gold medal and an NCAA championship and a FIBA, F-I-B-A, World Cup gold medal and a WNBA championship. In 2009, Griner was named the nation's number one high school women's <clears throat> basketball player by Rivals.com. Um, she was selected in the 2009 Phoenix Mercury All-American Basketball Team, and she received the Best Female Athlete SB Award by ESPN in, in 2013, 2012-2013, um, uh, and she also signed an, uh, an endorsement deal with Nike. And she stands six, six feet, nine inches, uh, six feet nine inches and wears a U.S. size seventeen shoe. Um, that that's quite tall. Um, uh, your thought on women's basketball, Ron? Go ahead. It is ridiculous. He wears a size seventeen shoe. That that is uh totally ridiculous. Anyway, because let me tell you this. I, I've been um I've been following this before and uh, with these uh grinder all the way. The, the problem was you know they. I know the United States has illegal stuff, but when it's in Russia, you know, I don't understand why... She, uh, according, to, according to the Internet here and sources, she was in Russian customs um, after cartridges containing less than a gram, less than a gram of hashish oil yeah. was found in her luggage, and later she was arrested on drug charges. She's been entering. Mm -hmm. She had entered uh, Russia to play the Russian Premier League during the uh, WNBA off season, and her yeah. trial her trial was July first. She pled guilty. She pled guilty to charges on August fourth, and um, you know. Ron, yeah. Ron, Ron, can you stop that rustling, please? I'm still, I'm still here. I thought you guys are taking the paper off of the uh, computer. That's what happened here. Yeah. But this is a new one. They just got the new computer. That's what they did anyway. But anyway, so the bottom of the story is this is why he's been arrested at the airport. And I said, oh, boy, that, that is so much hardship. That is so much hardship. That's making that information. But this is what it said, according to Amanda... Um, let's see. The same up. This is what it says. He descended to mid June before he got before she got uh, arrested, and then then he has he jokes on her letter. She doesn't know where it came from. And according to Amanda, if I don't pronounce the name, if I don't pronounce the name, don't worry about it. It's uh, Dafu B, a player for the Los Angeles Sparks, totally associated press. Keep in touch with her colleague. She's an amazing soul that brings light, and I don't think a lot of people. Couldn't imagine that, and that's what they uh, did on this uh, story. And then, according to what the uh, the president and LeBron James, and here's what it also says: according to uh, LeBron James, that also swift action on the Olympic gold medal case, during social posts and under the platform encouraging President Joe Biden and Vice President Harris to keep pushing for Grand's returns, and that's what they're here to do. Because they need to bring her home quickly instead of keeping her there nine years. And that is not the, the way they had to do it, but they have to do it for uh, Biden and Harris. They, they're a good team, but this is the time they got to push forward to uh, bring um, to bring Brittany back home. Definitely. Mm. Yeah, because that's always happened, because I don't understand. Because, but when you look, guess what? The United States. I know we have about the marijuana and the, uh, the legal things going on right now. Even here in New York, everything is legal here in the United States. But in their country of Russia, you know, this is the problem what the Russian people is. And who knows? It could be spreading something else like getting some illegal stuff. And, that's just, and this is getting crazier and crazier. 
But that's what they have. That's why, according to them, they have to spend what's going to happen, what kind of, um, I can't say, what kind of resources they're going to do. I have no clue about this, but this is going to be a, this is going to be a tough challenge between the president, the vice president, Levon, of course, and, uh, of course, for Brittany. So it's going to be very important. Um, yeah, um, hold on. Stop tape for two seconds. Need your help? Technical problem, please. Oh, that's me, sure. Hold on, two seconds. I need help okay. in my computer. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Okay, thank you. Is it on? No, it's not. Oh, yes, sir. Okay, great. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Don't worry, um, folks. All right, can we continue? Yep. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, sorry about the technical difficulties here. That will be edited out. Um, in, in terms of, um, and Arlene, if you want to jump in here. Um, now, let's uh, kind of look up what exactly um, the steroids you know, because I think I I think it's not right. If you do have a doctor's uh, card, Ron, Ron, can you stop yeah. the rustling? I hear I hear you from my well, uh, but a doctor's card is very important because you have to take it what you it's what what the doctor has ordered, mm -hmm. and if they show who knows what's going to happen, but they don't believe her, and I don't know what's been the problem here. But they have to meet doctor's orders in order to uh, bring that to Russia. Now, according to um, professional sports, um, uh, Ron, it, this is, the speaker is picking up that. Yeah. The, the, what are you doing there? The speaker is picking up that. Be careful. Um, okay, so steroids is a man-made version. According to the definition, steroids is a man-made version of hormones. Uh, don't, worry. Don't, don't worry, it's just the background. It's just, just in the background by the other guys back here. That's one at the library. Can you move away from that noise? All right, I, I can't. Well, I, okay, let's see. I'm not going to make it. I can say I'm right nearby the uh, computer. That's why I'm seeing the screen here. Okay. So, all right. Steroids is a man-made... Um, version um, of hormones um, normally produced by adrenal glands, which uh, are two small glands found above the kidneys. When, take, when taken in dosage higher than the amount your body normally produces, steroids reduce, also can uh, reduce redness and, and, and inflammation, but in, yeah. according to, uh, to sports, if you take um, anabolic anabolic steroids, um, it is a problem when uh, you're when you're dealing with uh, trying to bulk up, and a lot of people don't want you to use steroids, especially in professional sports because um, they're known as a drug, and uh, there have been. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, Ron, do you know any professional? I know there was a couple of professional sports people that have taken uh, that have taken steroids in the past. Do you know of any? Well, I remember when there are players like, for example, uh, past uh, baseball players, players such as uh, what's what's that? Oh, let's see. For example, Barry Bonds. You know what the uh, where everything has been bad and it happened and this has been a problem in terms of baseball. Mm -hmm. That's what they were looking for. The second thing that you have to look for is baseball superstar and um, it's like Mark McGuire steroids, and then there's Rafael Palmero steroids. Uh, steroids, yeah, steroids, steroids in two thousand five um, were banned. Uh, by the Major League Baseball organization, um, with HGH banned and you and because of its usage in 2011, 
Faye Vincent is actually on record stating that Congress has a list of illegal substances that include steroids and one of uh, and it must be obtained via a prescription. So it, it was banned um, in 2001. Now the difference, uh, let's talk about doping, okay? Uh, over the ma course of Major League Baseball history, steroids and uh, steroid testing was not a major it uh, was not a major issue, but in 1991, Commissioner Faye Vincent sent a memo to all teams stating <clears throat> that steroid use w and was against the rules, and there was no official um, change. Vincent. Vincent has said in a memo that was intended to be a moral statement that players, um, players that are rather than a legal one, uh, that was the only way of making a change uh, and through collective bargaining. So uh, steroids was banned from MLB in, tw in 2005 and in 2011 when Congress made it illegal. So, um, yeah, um, so let's talk, since uh, we're on the topic of Major League Baseball, go ahead if you want to mention, uh, and um, well, let's well, talk we, about the Yankees, uh, if you want. Yankees and the Mets, I'll tell you something, both of those teams have done amazing so far because they were getting close to the most important September because they will say, there's people saying, they were leading in first place. They were first place leading. And then they've blown most of the losses to our, of all baseball teams. But people are going to say, please, don't blow the season. Just keep it in a safe direction. That's how the Yankees have done so far because the Yankees already has a, a lot of game lead. But there's only one person <clears throat> who's responsible for the Yankees, and that Yankee is none other than Aurora's. Eric, I mean, Aaron Judge. Mm -hmm. or, and he has been unbelievable. Like, he has hit over uh, uh, 45 to 50 home runs. And this <coughs> could have a shot of being Roger Maris's single-season re record as a Yankee. And I mean as a Yankee. I don't think he's going to get to 70, but he will be have a good chance to beat Roger Maris's record right now. And that's a very important and... And I'm going to tell you where he is at right now at this point on the Aaron Judge home run at at this uh, this moment critical record right now. It's up there at this point. He has 51 home runs, and that's just amazing. 113 RBI, that's mm -hmm. amazing. And this is why he's 10 home runs away, and we and he's still got uh, a whole month. Before he can go over the 60 home run mark and may be Roger Merritt, but this, but to my guess, I think this is going to be being, I will guess, uh, May Sosa, May Sosa's record is 66. So that's 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 a guess. I'm going to say that. So now, really heard? quick before we get back to the issue at hand and overdosing in sports, uh, coronavirus and sports. I know that in 2020 there was. Um, a big issue in reference to um, the stands. Are all games now um, allowed to be played in the stadiums, like with baseball and football and everything? Are they? Uh, are... Well, the fans are back again because they are really building a real uh, stadium, and this is like you're missing about so many games. Like for example, when every game is there. People crowds are like eight thousand on some stadiums. Like for example, in Cleveland, about eight to ten thousand. Now, another stadium was um, Kansas City, about twenty thirty five thousand. Now, with the Yankees, and if you remember last week, as I was talking about this, the Yankees got more good crowds now. Got about forty nine thousand, close fifty thousand fans. It's just like this is like this is and this is what bringing the teams back together. It's what they always did, what they have to. And the simple thing is, this is going to be, this is the most entertaining sports baseball. Let's compare it. Let's compare it. 2020, there was no crowd. 
and then when there's the World Series, what it was cardboard, be it was cardboard, people. it was cardboard cutouts, Got, you yeah, know, cardboard cutouts on no on like one or two people in the stands, and that was about it. Yeah, and another and another thing that's happened, they have the virtual, you know, when Fox Sports puts virtual reality crowd right there, mm-hmm. and they put as the a virtual reality, that's so like a whole stadium crowd right there. It's virtual reality. I don't know how they did to pull this one out, but I don't think it's not that helpful. But when they came back with, but when they came back with the crowd after the last year, I think this is this is the team they really deserve. And I'm expecting no matter what this is going to be, this is a great. This is going to be a great season. Um, Arlene, Arlene, since we got you on the phone, did you want to say anything in re- reference to um, drug overdosing or anything of that nature in sports? Go ahead. Yeah, some of these, um, I'm with the athletes, you know. Yeah, yeah, they get all, between, but, but, but. Even fending people do. Yeah, they, well, here's the thing. They get all this money. Like, uh, like anyone famous, they overdose on drugs. You know, look at Carl Cox. Yeah. Look at Carl Cox. Yeah, no, well, in terms of sports, they get all this money. Guys, that Mhm. But they, they get all this money and they don't know what to do with it. They, this is. This is the this is the problem. They ruin, they they ruin sports. They they ruin the game when the game when the game is supposed to be played cleanly. Look, it, um, in November two thousand five. Okay, uh, MLB owners and players approved even tougher penalties for positive tests. Under new rules, under new rules, the a first positive test would be would result in a fifty game suspension. A second po- a a second. Yeah, I remember talking to uh, a black woman got caught. Yeah, in 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 um. A, a, se- a second positive test, Ron, are you there? Yes, I'm still there. A second positive test of steroids or drugs would result in a 100-game suspension, and a third positive test would result in lifetime suspension from Major League Baseball. And and in March 20, in March. Uh, on March 28, 2014, the players and owners announced that these were the penalties for a positive test and they would increase to an 80-game suspension for the first offense and then escalate to a 162-game suspension for a second offense and lifetime ban from the sport for a third. Um, so, and, you know, Barry, Gon- Barry Bond's trial was even worse. Um... You know, um, but anyway, you know, the game is, is supposed to be played uh, cleanly and, uh, you know, let's um, give uh, the public what they pay for. You know, they pay a lot of money for these seats and there's no reason for these players to mess up their lives because of um, overdosing on drugs, alcohol, uh, doping, etc. You know, so uh, no, we don't want that. Um, any football things going on yet? Did they start practicing? Well, well, they already started last, uh, last weekend. Of course, one of the games I remember when Vanderbilt took on the University of Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, and they won a big time of 60, 62 points, and it was a great win for Vanderbilt. But we have something very special, because even though we're talking about on air, we have a story that came very, very special, and that was from the University of Rutgers. And according to records, they said they have continued to serve the community each Friday. Now, remember a student athlete in the Special Olympics of New Jersey has part of a Shop for Change initiative. More than 30 Thursday nights made the trip to campus to see the NJ for joining the open ceremonies and countless athletes participating in the Special Olympics. Uh, my and April joined Rutgers in 2020, immediately exempt from becoming involved with the program's community service and efforts. While well, Friday for the first time, Special Olympics was another opportunity to make an impact for 
this community. And this, you said Special the, Olympics, Special Olympics, New Jersey, right? Right, you are Special Olympics, New Jersey, and it's and it's, it's interesting to say it's really awesome. Job for Change program, after them says it's really about we can impact our community. We're just going to do all that for the people and mostly the communities. A big shout out to those uh, Rutgers football teams because this is this is what. Yeah, a big, big shout out, a big shout out to Rutgers University for um, helping Special Olympics out and for for all they do for the community. That's correct. Anyway, and uh, the other thing, of course, I know I am ready for the season because I can't wait to say go good luck to Rutgers this weekend because they're going to get ready to get their first game this uh, Saturday against um, Boston College Eagles, and they're playing in Boston College down in Boston. Which I may be down here this weekend. I have no idea, but I'm going to check it out one day. Good. Mm-hmm. Very good organization. Okay, so why don't we talk about, before we get back to the topic at hand, why don't we mention um, a little bit about uh, Road Trip? Go ahead. We are, well, okay, we're back for, well, here's the here's what happened, Booker. We were starting the eighth season last, uh, last year. However, due to the computer was down and everything else, and the, the, and the video equipment was down, and everything is going out of hand. So next now, everything is back to uh, so ready to go back into play starting in, in, in uh, October. But what we're going to do, we're still going to be season eight, but it's season eight 2.0. Why I said that, and I talked to our turds and I talked to the gang over here, it's the continuation of season eight. So we quit 2.0 because it continues everything. So, of course, we're, we're back coming up in October for a new episode. And it's going to be 4.30 a.m. Friday morning. And, of course, again, at 11.30 to midnight before Sci-Fi Ninja Theater on Brooklyn Free Speech 1. And, of course, you can check your channels across the way. And, and one other thing, too, I want to give a, also a special shout-out to one of our guys, Art Kurt, and to say, Art, congratulations he has a B free award for Wow Factor this year. So Hart, thank you for now I've been part of the game show block party production crew. And I said this is a great year for the game show block party community. So well done, Art. Okay. Um special thanks to Art Kurtz and uh his television program out in Brooklyn, uh, which is what the game show block party. And you know we thank we thank Art for g- giving a lot to the community, um, as he has for many many years. Um, you know, so it's also, and also to his five hundred show coming up in September, so that's going to be a big bigger surprise by that. So mm-hmm. happy five hundred show, Art. Yep. Okay. So getting back to sports, um, go ahead, Ron. All right. So. Now that uh, we talked to Rutgers and then we talked a little bit about it, and there's also, about well, speaking of sports anyway, we also got our NFL season coming up this year, and we know about a lot of teams just now that, uh, how would you say, because now that we don't have Tom Brady in this one, so no, we don't see Tom Brady to push around with, and of course, on Gronkowski, which will hopefully be back. But there are teams ready for another season. And already, last year's champions, the Los Angeles Rams, and I tell you, this team really deserves a championship, and they did just that. They're going to try to defend the championship, but I'm looking for a great season. But for this season, I'm going to say, if i going by Super Bowl uh, 56 coming up, or 57, depends on which one Depends on which one you're going to say. I will say it's going to be, for the AFC, it's going to be the Tennessee Titans. And from the NFC, it's got to be, is this, this is a tough decision, but I get to, I will go with Philadelphia. So this is my guess anyway, so that's all important. There's one other thing to add all this to it. We are back with the NFL Pitch Challenge again this season. It's the 2022 season. We have uh, players competing for bragging rights, and we're looking for a, a most exciting season. So if you're interested to play this game, and it's, it's no charge whatsoever, play for bragging rights and all the time every week for, for 18 weeks. 
I'm surprised it's 18 weeks this year. But just do us a favor and log on. Look for the Facebook page that says Ron Anthony Rondon, and then you'll find the page that says 2022 Road for Ron Rondon NFL Picks Challenge. So what we do, good luck to everybody who was there. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, why don't we do this? Um, we would like to promote um, Vermont's uh, well, while we're in the interim, because we only have a, uh, a little while left, and then we'll get back to Arlene, uh, we are uh, promoting the 34th Annual Brain Injury Conference, uh, which will take, which will uh, <clears throat> turn around and take place in Killington, Vermont, um, which is... Uh, which is um, October 12th uh, this year in Killington, Vermont. Um, let me get the uh, information here. <clears throat> and um, hold on one second. I'm going to get the information. Uh, this is, let me, hold on a second. I'm getting it. Um one second, let me just uh, get all the information here so I can uh, promote this. Um, one second. Oh, here we go. I got it. Um, it is the 34th annual. One sec. Here we go. The, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we're going to have to re-edit this. October 12, 2022, the 34th Annual Brain Injury Conference hosted by the Brain Injury Association of Vermont. The location, um, and we'll put the flyer up, the location is Killington Grand Resort, Killington, Vermont, um, which um, we will let you know and stay up to date and information, uh, you can go to the following website. You can go to the following website at www. Give guys, guys, the the noise in the background. Um, you can go to www. Dot uh, classy. Dot org. That is www. Give classy. Dot org. B I A V T conference 2022. Um, uh, save the date October 12, 2022, the 34th annual brain injury conference hosted by the Brain Injury Association of Vermont with the help of Green Mountain Support Services. Um, we will be there, Abled and on, Abled and on Air will be there. It, it will be a recorded event for Abled and On Air. Um, and we thank this organization for um, letting us come and speak. Uh, and this is October 12, 2022 at the Killington Grand Resort in Killington, Vermont. You can register for the conference at www give classy.org forward slash B I A V T conference 2022 brain injury association of Vermont. Um, and, uh, we thank them for that. Uh, and also, um, before we, um, get to that, if you want to find out more information on able then on air, you can go to www.orcamedia.net. Um, um, go ahead, Arlene. Did you want to say anything else about sports and steroids or anything? No, no. In track and field, you know, in track and field, there was a uh, one field woman that was done with drugs. And who is that? I forgot her name. It was a black woman. Mm. Ron, do you know who that was? Yeah, you know, for a long time. I think it was like Jackie Joyner or Curtsy or something like that. I have no idea. Uh, mm. um, I, I, I'm not a talented computer, but I, I have no idea. Okay. Um, well, um, 
Okay, uh, really quick again, uh, we would like to thank Ron Rondon for joining us on Ableton On Air, and please check out his show, uh, Road Trip with Ron Rondon, at Brooklyn Free Speech One, and they can be, their website is www, go ahead Ron, if you want to mention the website. I'll tell them right there, it's www.brick, that's B-R-I-C, artsmedia.org slash one, and you can watch it firsthand at the 11.30 Friday night, that's, that's going to be Friday night, and of course, 4.30 a.m. Friday morning, so if you're up early and having coffee, watch it 4.30 in the morning, if you're up late before your party, who knows, so 11.30 Friday night, so check it out. Okay, um, and the last time uh, for this show today, um, I got the correct um, situation. The Brain Injury Association of Vermont, which is located at One Derby Lane in Wat- Waterbury, um, they are having, a, again, the 34th Annual Brain Injury Conference um, on uh, Wednesday, October 12th at the Kill- Killington Grand Hotel in Vermont, the heart of the Green Mountains. This this day, and by the way, we're having a flyer. Um, we're having a flyer here. Um, this day, we'll have in-person vendors, speakers, lunch, and a silent auction. This year's keynote speaker is survivor and mental health blogger Ariel Johnson. Speakers include Barb Abson, uh, director of caregiver support for the Central Vermont. Uh, Council on Aging, and it also will have the, uh, it will also have John Raphael, um, who is a social worker with the National Alliance for Direct Support Professionals, and um, other professionals who live, work, and who have brain injury in the community right here in Vermont. Uh, They will have other speakers, including myself, Lawrence Seiler, um, um, of Ableton On Air, and we will be there uh, focusing on Ableton On Air and speaking about, um, you know, what is it like uh, living with uh, challenges and myself being a journalist for um, 30 years. Uh, For more information on that conference, please visit the Brain Injury uh, Association website at www.biavt.org or find the Brain Injury Association of Vermont on Facebook and, and support them at support at biavt.org. That's biavt.org. And if you want to sign up for the conference, you can go to www.give.classy. Dot org give dot classy dot org forward slash b i a v t conference two thousand twenty two that's uh give dot classy dot org forward slash b i a v t conference um two thousand twenty two this show today was about um overdose prevention and uh um uh and um sports and um, sports and uh, steroids. And also, please watch tonight at 5 p.m. Orca Media will be at, I know this is uh, going to be taped, but Orca Media will uh, be at the State House, Vermont State House, uh, taping the Overdose Prevention Day speeches at the State House. So please um, come out and support people that have been affected by um, overdosing and drugs. Uh, we here at Ableton on there wish everybody well, and, um, and we wish everybody uh, much recovery when it comes to overdosing um, on drugs, especially uh, the horrible drug of fentanyl. And we want um, all the Vermonters to get the help that they need, especially from agencies such as the Brain Injury Association and other uh, agencies that do support these um, the, these causes. Um, uh, Able Den On Air is sponsored by Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, and many, many others, including the partners of the Brain Injury Association of Vermont and the Green Mountain Support Services and many others, also including the Association 
for the for the blind and visually impaired, the division for the blind and visually impaired, and um, thank you to the partners of um, of uh, of Road Trip with Ron Rondon from Brooklyn Free Speech One for coming on today's Able Then On Air. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of the day. Okay, I'm Lauren Seiler. I'm on. See you next time. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press, Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Then On Air has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Boston, New England Chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.